Recently, some of you have been vocally wondering why I bother to do the dev Q&As and why I continue to talk about Eve Echoes, despite the fact that, to quote, clearly it angers me and makes me upset. Shouldn't I just move on to something more positive and leave Eve Echoes in the dust? And you know what, maybe one day I will, but for the time being, I want to sit and talk about Eve Echoes because this is a game I do thoroughly love. I want to love this game. I want it to be something truly spectacular and special. This is kind of how I imagine parents of difficult children may feel like if you're child ends up being like a drug addict, murderer, convict in prison. It's like you want to love this child, but at the same time, external forces are kind of making it difficult for you, right? Now, if you're worried that today's dev Q&A is going to be another one of those ranty benzies, everything's negative, then allow me to assuage that fear by saying at least one of this week's questions actually fills me with hope. Yes, hope. I've gone through the dev Q&A and come out the other side like, Okay, maybe, just just maybe Netties, are, you know, are just kind of getting all of this out of their system and who knows, maybe once we've eventually got Titans at the anniversary event, they might go back and do some other stuff. Just hold on, just hold on, just hold on, cross your fingers, keep on holding and well, we'll see, we'll see, right? Anyway, it's time for another low quality bullshit video um, for, <laughs> to quote a comment I received last week. Let's jump right into this week's dev Q&A. So, question number one, we have all the implants we needed. Actually, we didn't need any of them, but okay. But there's still a remaining one. It's the Yan Yung's decomposer. So, do you have plans to add it up? First things first here, again, implants I don't think we ever needed. Implants and nanocores were added because they are monetizable. Look at EVE Online, there is nothing like that. EVE Echoes, those are now basically pay to win systems. I disagree that they should have been added in the first place. I absolutely disagree with how they chose to implement implants. But hey, let's move on from that and look at the question. Yan Jung Decomposer Implant, why? There are two Yan Jung ships in the game, both of them are awful, and there are only meta level 5 modules for them, so it's absolute trash, like there is no reason to ever fly one of these ships beyond the lols. And yeah, I know, I, I talk about like the whole thing of find your own fun in the game. And I get that some people's fun is going to be flying the Shan Yue prototype and the Han Yue prototype. I get that those are ships that people enjoy flying. I used to. And I really wish that they would just release the bloody actual versions. Like the Han Yue and the Shan Yue Destroyer, the non-prototype versions I've said before, are legitimately unironically good. Especially if you have access to the different tech levels of the Yan Jung models, different meta levels, sorry, of the Yan Jung modules. Having different decomposers and all of that on your on those ships can actually make them really fun to fly. Until such time as we have those ships, though, an implant is just pointless. Like, Netties, you've got to understand, love it or hate it, and believe me, I'm in the latter group here, when it comes to Netties adding stuff to the game, they're only going to add stuff if they can directly monetize it, if people are going to buy it, right? If people are going to swipe their credit card to pay for it. Now, this does mean that sometimes they add new things like uh, the later stages of the... Uh, of the Dormant Realms, but because that's trying to promote implants and nanocores, especially for capital ships. If you want capital ships and you want your capital ship to be good, you're going to need implants, you're going to need um, nanocores, and if you want to be able to do those latter stage Dormant Realms, you're going to need good nanocores and good implants fully leveled up, right? So it's monetization. It's all about pushing the monetization. This means they are never going to add a Yan Jung decomposer because what's the point? No one is going to be running these at you know a point where you're actually going to want to level up said implant. No one's running those ships. So maybe you'll get two or three people by the decomposer implant. It's not worth the development time. As simple as that. Until we see the actual Yan Zhong ships added, which doesn't look like it's ever going to happen at this rate. Thank you for your feedback, says Kylan, but due to limited staffing, there we go, it wouldn't be added to the content roadmap in the short term. We'll pay close attention to the feedback in this aspect and see what we can do in the future. Kylan, 
Anjung, if you're listening to this, for God's sake, just release the Anjung ships. It's been three years since you mentioned these and sat, sat and sold them as the cool thing exclusive to Echoes. We're getting these ships that EVE Online doesn't have. New weapons that EVE Online doesn't have. It's going to be amazing. Nearly three years later, we still have no clue when they're coming and NetEase just doesn't seem to care. Until we get the actual ships, there's no point doing things like implants. Like, who's using this? Question number two. In EVE Online, each faction have their unique shield and armor resistance. Yes, they do. However, in Echo's resistances are almost the same, so that one kind of weapon can deal with all pirates. In this case, ships with high DPS like Apocalypse Striker are in a dominant position. Do you have plans to diversify pirates' resistance? You're actually misunderstanding something here. The, the reason that the Apocalypse Striker is in a dominant position isn't due to rat resistances. In fact, if you're sitting in Claraland, the Apocalypse Striker is actually not your highest DPS ship for that. It's The reason the Apocalypse Striker is popular is because you can sit at range and pop things ridiculously easily, which you just can't with the other ships. Ultimately, the rats in Claralam are armor tanked, so electromagnetic and thermal damage actually isn't that good against them. It's just the fact that the Apocalypse Striker is so ridiculously powerful in so many different ways, it doesn't care. And that's what it comes down to here. Do you have a plan to diversify pirate resistance? They're not going to, but let's look at the answer. Thank you for your feedback, but the pirate ship resistance of each faction is different in our game. No, it's not, but we'll come to that. We'll continue to pay attention to similar requests and make adjustments if there's more feedback on the difference not being big enough. There is no difference in the resistances, really, there. Um, ultimately, the way that pirates work in EVE Echoes in regards to resistances, open up your ship tree, have a look at the ship. If you are fighting, for example, a Gisty, uh, like a Gisty Hurricane, it has the exact same stats as an actual tech a hurricane if you're fighting things like a pithy raven it has the same stats as a standard raven and it should be shield tanked and armor tanked yeah i do think there should be more diversity again looking at eve online as an example the difference between a kaldari navy shield extender and a republic fleet shield extender is dramatic like they do different things they're both shield extenders but they have different resistances they have different fitting requirements and they give different bonuses so there are times when you would use the kaldari navy one and times when you would use the republic fleet one they're, they're different modules and it's an actual meaningful choice as to which one you choose to fit to your ship and it's the same when it comes to for example example, the, uh, the Imperial Navy or the Galente, uh, Galente Navy armor plates, stuff like that. Having completely different resistances on the ships I think would be awesome because again in EVE Online if you go up against, I'm just mothballing, uh, spitballing here, if you go up against a Sanchez Nation group of rats they have completely different resistances to Blood Raider rats. In EVE Echoes, they don't. They are the same ships. They just have a couple of different modules fitted to them, um, but that's literally it. Until you hit the like Overseer Dead Spaces where you're actually going up against the faction ships, the difference between a Blood Raider and a Sansha Anomaly of equal tier is practically negligible. It doesn't make a difference, and I would love to see that actually added as a thing. I would love to see resistances completely tweaked like that, but I would love to see those modules changed as well. I don't see it happening. Um, Kylem pretty much backs that up and says, yeah, it, it's not going to happen because it's easy content for them, right? The thing is, in EVE Online, on one hand, you have the actual pirate ships. For example, it might be a converted Heron or a converted uh, Magnate or something like that. It's going to have different resistances based on the actual Magnate. Like if you have a Blood Raider Magnate, it's going to, or Blood Raider Coercer for a better example, it's going to have different stats to a Sanchez Nation Coercer, which has different stats to a, uh, a player Coercer. And that is effort, because you now have to create three different stat blocks, right? Whereas in Echoes, the game just kind of goes, oh, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a coercer. It, it, it's just a coercer, and then we put a skin on it. That's how Echoes does it. It's a lot lower effort. And I guess you can kind of see this both ways. I'm sure some people really like the fact that they can just open up the tree and go, okay, it's a coercer, therefore I know what I'm up against. 
I do wish we had that versatility. Also worth noting, Eve Echoes uh, compared to Eve Online, we're actually missing a ton of the pirate ships. I mean, in Eve, in Angel Cartel, for example, you just see things like the Dramiel, the Cinnabal, and the Macariel. But what about all of the others, like Impalers or Ambushers and things like this that are variants of the Tramiel? There are some Sanchez Nation ships that look completely different, like the Huntsman and uh, stuff like this. Loads of really cool ships that we just don't see. Our rats are basically our own ships just used against us. Moving on to question three. This is the one that actually makes me happy. Is there any plan to add explosion velocity in the missile skill? Actually, these days missiles have so low damage application to small ships now, so we need that skill like EVE Online. Yeah, we do. I've said this before, the biggest problem with missiles is application. When it comes down to it, once you understand how explosion radius and explosion velocity works on missiles, um, basically when you do the math on this, and I have demonstrated this in a video using the Hound and doing all the mathematics on it, do go check that out. If you actually have a look at the statistics and how missile application is calculated, then explosion velocity is always the weak stat. It is literally what is letting these things down. We have the same missile application statistics on our missiles as EVE Online. The trouble is our ships move faster and they are overall smaller. So missile application is based on the actual velocity and the signature radius of the target vessel, right? So if you make a ship smaller and faster, then missiles do not apply as well to it. So we have the exact same missiles as EVE Online, but they're being fired against ships that are smaller and faster, which means they are always going to struggle to actually apply that damage. Secondarily, whereas EVE Online has skills that actively change your explosion radius, your explosion velocity, they are skills literally dedicated to just explosion velocity, getting that under control, this kind of thing. We don't have that in Echoes. In fact, none of the skills really affect application to any notable degree. This cut, like if you look at say small missile operation and small missile upgrade, there is some application bonus in there, but really not much. And even rigging for it just doesn't work. And explosion velocity is absolutely always the worst. This is why if you are using a nano core that has the option to uh, apply a bonus to explosion velocity, you absolutely should go for that. It is always the stat that you are weakest on at any time as a missile pilot. So when Kylum here says we have plans to introduce new skills, which include skills that increase the explosion velocity, that makes me happy. I am still concerned that that's just going to be a new capital skill because ultimately it's only the capitals that need this, right? No, it's not. Even small missiles need this skill. I have been an advocate for a long time that we need generic skills. So for example, if I'm flying small missile ships, like say I want to fly a Kestrel or a Gama or heck a Corax or a Talwa, I'm going to train small missile operation and small missile upgrade, right? If I want to fly, say, a Caracal or a Drake, I'm going to train medium missile operation and medium missile upgrade. If I want to fly a Raven or a Typhoon or a Bar Guest, I'm going to, uh, to train into large missile operation and large missile upgrade. What I would love to see is a simple skill called missiles. And all that skill does is it, like, increase your explosion velocity whilst reducing your explosion radius and maybe increasing the flight time or flight speed of your missiles, this kind of thing. Same as we have drone. If you are a drone pilot, whether you're using small, medium or large drones, you do need to train into the drone skill. And I'd like to see that applied to other systems as well. I would genuinely like to see a cannon skill that increases the optimal range of your cannons a little bit, maybe increases the fall off range a little bit, maybe increases the rate of fire. I think a laser skill that reduces the amount of uh, capacitor used and maybe increases tracking. Um, I would love to see one that is for rail guns and again, maybe increases optimal range and tracking, but not accuracy fall off. So maybe the cannon one could be accuracy fall off and tracking, but not optimal. I don't know, but I think standard skills that if you want to, use just small cannons you're going to need this skill if you want to use small missiles you're going to need that skill therefore it's not just train the two cannon skills train the two missile skills it's now training the two cannon skills and the generic cannon skill two missile skills and the generic missile skill 
This is this gives a little bit more impetus into choosing a route because it means that if I want to train small cannons, then medium cannons and large cannons, that cannon skill goes up the middle with those. It benefits all tiers, which means if I want to fly multiple different like tonnages of ships, it actually is beneficial to me to just go with one particular weapon type like cannons or lasers. Currently, this is sort of the case because when you get higher up the advanced and expert level on, say, cannons, you also get gyro stabilizer activation time, and that does obviously affect if you're using small or large cannons. If you are expert five in small, medium, and large cannons, you get 44 seconds of gyro stabilizer activation time, no matter what type of ship you fitted said gyro stabilizer to. That's cool. I'd like to see more of that. And this whole thing of adding a new skill to increase explosion velocity, brilliant. I cannot wait for this to happen. I'm, again, people are talking about balance patch in April. I don't see discussion about it anywhere. I would love it to be by April. This is something we need sooner rather than later. But we'll see. We'll see how they choose to implement it. I could be really happy about this. I could end up being ridiculously upset about it, especially if they decide to do with this kind of skill what they chose to do with salvaging. But hey, let's not open that can of worms. Question four, moving on very quickly. Question four, the delivery system and freight skill. Oh boy, this system has been pretty much lying dormant in the game for some time. Players simply see no reason to utilize it for moving items from one place to another. When I asked about it, it seems the taxes and fees paid by the player to make the request was a huge deterrent for the player. The hauler doesn't make much isk and can't really root themselves well to avoid travel while traveling across New Eden. Most of the isk goes to the game, not to other players, is what I think that's supposed to say. We've also noted problems in the delivery system, says Kylan, but the deliver uh, development resources are limited and we need to do higher priority content first. There aren't plans to change it for the time being, but we'll see what we can do when we have time. The famous in the future, which means it's probably never going to come because the literal point here, the, it's kind of saying the loud part loud and the quiet part quiet. But it is there. We need to do higher priority content first. And what you need to understand is when Netty say higher priority content, they mean content that can be directly monetized. This means more capitals. This means more nano cores, more implants, this kind of stuff. Anything that they can get you to open up your wallet and pay them more for is going to take priority over other things. It's a business. I mean, look, I, I can get angry at this, but ultimately that kind of makes sense. The trouble is, you could also, it's because of the business structure they've chosen. If you look at EVE Online, where you don't have any of this crap, it's because they are focused on keeping people playing via the subscription. Here, the subscription is not the main payment. At this point, I almost wonder why they bother having Omega. Just, you know, let everyone fly everything and then just make your money off the capital. But they're never going to do that because they're already making money off Omega. Despite the fact that I honestly think that would be a smart move to get new players into the game, it's not going to happen. But there we go. As for freight and hauling with the delivery system, it's not even just taxes. I speak to a lot of people who say, yeah, the taxes are bad. Uh, the player's request. Look, I'll be completely honest. If I'm sitting down near, I don't know, Clara Lamb and I want to get something delivered from, say, Jita, it's not that expensive. It's really not that expensive. Yeah, the freighter doesn't make much money at all. The problem is it takes up to an hour to reach me, whereas I can just jump in an interceptor and I can do that journey in eight minutes. That's the problem we have. Safe autopiloting being ridiculously fast. I'm almost tempted to suggest we should do the EVE Online thing of autopilot slow boating you, 20, you know, dropping you 20 kilometers off the gate and then slow boating you in, just to make it so that if you want to manually pilot there, yeah, it's nice and fast, but if you want to do it offline, it's going to take ages. I don't know. This is one of those things, again, I always take a ton of flack from this, from idiots who cannot differentiate between me saying this is bad for the game and it's bad for me. Ultimately, I can sit there and I can understand that, yeah, you know what? I quite like the fact that I can safely autopilot from deepest, darkest null sec all the way to Jita, pick my stuff up and then safely autopilot back. I press two buttons and then I switch my phone off and then I just wait for it to beep and, you know, I, I log in and then I turn back around, press three buttons and off I go again. I turn my phone off and when it's done, I log back in. I quite, you know, I, I, I get it. I like that. It's convenient. Does that mean it's good for the game? No. No, it really doesn't. And this is kind of the key point that we have. When people come at me angry, eh, 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 nah, Benzie. 
I'm not going to do the voice because, you know, it's, it's not fair to people when I do a voice like that. I, I may genuinely get super frustrated with those people, but hey, let's, you know, be adults about this. When people come to me and say, Benzi, I think you just like to complain too much. I think it's freaking fantastic that I can do everything completely safely. I never have to lose a ship. I can fly everywhere on completely safe autopilot. I can sit in Clara Lamb and blow stuff up for days and weeks and months. I can fly capital ships and, you know, buy all of these implants and that to beat my opponents. I like big ships, and I like being able to spend a ton of money buying implants and making sure that I'm better than everyone else just by sheer dint of, you know, me having more money in my bank account. And you know what? All jokes aside, that's cool. If that's what you find fun, that's cool. But you need to separate that what you enjoy and what is best for the game may be two completely separate things. I'm, I'm unironically happy if you enjoy flying capitals. Tons of content for you in the game right now. There's some really cool nano cores. Implants are really powerful. Lots of cool stuff going on if capitals are your thing. But it doesn't mean that that's good for the longevity of the game. That's the key point that we need to get out of here. What's good for the longevity of the game is not necessarily what is good for you individually as a player. And sometimes you need to be able to step back and say, you know what? Yeah, if I want people to be able to enjoy freight, we have to give up our safe autopiloting. If we want people to be able to enjoy freight and delivery, then we need to be incentivized to use that system more. And sometimes incentivizing you to use a system is done by disincentivizing you to use the alternative. And right now the alternative is completely safe autopiloting in an Atron 2 fitted with additional cargo rigs just to fly to G to turn around and come back. We need to undo the comfort of the game in order to provide these opportunities for other players. And I think a lot of people get angry when I suggest that, and I can kind of understand why. Because I'm saying, look, some of the things that you find comfortable need to go, because they're damaging the game. I'm not attacking you as a player. I'm saying that these systems should have never been developed this way in the first place. The key example I always come back to on this one is right back when the game launched, Autopilot broke all forms of warp disruption. I could sit in an anomaly, and someone could come along with a whole fleet of ships and all of them warp scramble me. And I'm sitting there at like negative 50 warp points, right? If I activated autopilot, I'd fly away because it broke the system. This also meant that you could sit on a gate and find a nice slow hauler. That hauler would be on autopilot. He would come through, you would warp disrupt him because you could lock him on in plenty of time. But because he was using autopilot, he would just warp off to safety, off to the next gate he goes kind of thing. This was something that a lot of people genuinely complained about when they fixed. They went, oh, but you know, autopilot's not safe anymore. And it's like, yes, that's the point. That's part of the gameplay. We had a system that was negatively impacting the actual gameplay. So when we look at the fact that completely safe interceptor autopilot and the fact that everyone just uses Jita, it's bad for delivery. It's bad for freight. If we want freight and delivery to be better, if we want people to actually be able to enjoy that aspect of the game, then we need to give up our comforts, right? That That's how that works. And whether or not you are happy with that, it, it's kind of the decision you have to make. Which is more important to you, your personal comfort or the longevity of the game? Having other people able to do what they want to do in-game as well. It's all fine and well saying, oh, I want more capitals, I want more capital content, I want bigger nanocores, I want bigger implants. Why can't you make it so that I can level my implant up to level 80? And all this kind of thing. Yeah, that may be awesome for you, and genuinely, if they add that and that's what you want, then awesome. But you have to understand that that is going to be pushing more and more players away, that is harming the longevity of the game, and eventually you will be playing the game alone. Like, that's a very niche group that want to fly capitals at the expense of all else. I know a lot of capital pilots who enjoy capitals and are sitting there saying, look, there's plenty of content to me. I'm loving the game, but I can see that everyone else is suffering. Why don't you go back and help fix them? I can wait a few months before more content. Like, you know, I'm enjoying the I'm enjoying the stuff I've got. Fix the rest of your game, then come back to me. Unfortunately, as Kylum says, development resources are limited and we need to do higher priority content first. So make of that what you will. Anyway, folks, I've been Captain Benzi. Another developer Q&A for you. Genuinely a bit of an up and down one this time. I've covered a lot. I've rambled a lot, as is usual for me. Hopefully you've enjoyed this low quality dev Q&A bullshit video. Really hope you enjoy it. Let me know your opinions. Otherwise, happy sailing and see you in New Eden.